and we are live. G'day crypto goers. I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back to the channel for the Crypto Sunday Summary. This being the 26th of November 2023, where as always a friend easy way of supporting this work is by simply hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new, ensuring you also knock that notification bell so you never miss a new episode. Also watch out for the bots in the comments below. I'll never ever ask you to contact me via Telegram or WhatsApp. They are scammers impersonating me trying to trick you. Please stay away. A very special shout out to my Patreon supporters, Malcolm from JustWillyBins.com.au, Michael Dunford of Monash Glass, Lee Perry, Darren Carter from Endura Flooring Extra, Gary from The Hive Cardano Sagpool, Carly from Carly McEwen Coaching, Luke Brody Express Enclosed Car Transport, and our good friend, Evan Floyd. I'm getting a 5x5 five five from Wonder Woman. Dylan says, g'day. Big Bear's flight is in the house, as is Finn Bear. Ronnie, I'm glad you're here, Ronnie. He says, Adam, um, I hope, hi, hang on. I hope Adam can explain what is happening at the front end of Hex Pulse Chain and Pulse X. <laughs> I'm not your guy. I'm, I, I can't explain it, but I'm glad you're here, Ronnie. I'm, I am glad you're here tonight because we've got lots to get through. Oof says, hey there, crypto goers. Wonder Woman says, uh, Mr. Presidente, hello, which is to our good friend, Ronnie. Steve J says, greetings, El Presidente. Remember, R Ronnie is El Presidente of the AFL fans association in victoria actually probably throughout all of australia um he gets a title el presidente uh hang on wrong microphone <laughs> thank you finn bear let me, let me fix this hang on I had one job make the audio work i can make the audio even better stand by i should sound better now finn bear can i get a, um, a radio check out there I am just flat out. I have literally today not stopped. I apologize for being late. I've just got into the studio, slapped a, a thumbnail together. Um, it, it's horrific. I mean, it's good. Life is good, but I'm just moving so fast. Ollie Henley, our crypto sister, says, Hi, Adam. Hi, Stokesicans. Uh, Ollie, I hope your sister's doing well. Uh, Wonder Woman has given me another five by five. Steve J says, Vet three day chart possible breakout. And Finn Bear says better. <laughs> it says it was a four by four and five by five. If everyone's wondering what the numbers mean, so it's one one number. So when we say a five by five, what does that mean? <laughs> Let's get straight into it on the crypto channel. The first number is the volume, and the second number is the clarity. So you might hear someone say loud and clear, but you can also say weak and unreadable or broken and distorted. So you can do it that way. But in aviation, we typically do numbers. First one being the volume, second one being the clarity. So you should now have a five by five. Clintrons has given me a five by five, sir. Um, Annex, the crypto says, enjoying your X shares. Yeah, I'm, remember, I've got two, I wear many hats, but the the amount of content that I can share with you on YouTube is very different to the content I can share with you on X. Some people don't like what I talk about on X. That's cool. Just stay in this space. Uh, some people hate something I say on X and then for <laughs> unsub, unfollow on X and unsub on YouTube, um, which is also cool. But as I said, no one's perfect and you don't want to agree with everything I say and you don't want to agree with everyone, what anyone says all the time because you want to always encourage your thoughts. So I'm trying to create a space where I explore different topics with you. I make you think, I make you question everything, question me, question yourself, question your family, question everyone and look for the truth, the diamond of truth. What he said, he said, she said, the interpretation and the actual incident itself. And that, the diamond of truth is everything. I, when I was younger, I thought it was a, like just two sides, his side and her side. No, but there's more to it. Then I thought there's a triangle of truth, but really there's a diamond of truth. And who knows, maybe as I get older, there'll be a hexagon of truth. And I know the hexagons will like that. Looking at the heat map, Bitcoin currently at uh, $37,000, 37, $37,787 rather, just dropping into the red today. ETH holding steady above that $2,000 mark. Well done, ETH. We have just gone into a deflationary supply of ETH again. It was deflationary. Uh, uh, it was inflationary, then deflationary, uh, then inflationary. Now we're back to deflationary. What does that mean? It means when Hex was, uh, sorry, Ethereum was first created, there was no fixed supply and it went up and up and up. Then when we had the merge and now they burn a lot of the supply, it started to go down. But then when everything got quiet in the crypto land, there wasn't that much transactions burning. So the supply of Ethereum actually started to go up again. But now that we're getting a lot of momentum in the bull run, uh, bull market, shall we say, it's now starting to drop down again. And I actually think it's working quite well. That supply is, it's almost like a self-leveling supply. When the markets are dead, it sort of, the supply creeps up a little bit. And when it's really pumping, it, it pulls back a bit. 
Um, Big Bears Flight says, I love you on X, Adam Stokes. Hilarious. At Big Bears Flight, you're, you're my number one <laughs> ally on X. And I always appreciate that you always write something on um, X to my comments. Some trigger a lot, but yeah. Thank you for being there. Finn Bear says, Twitter doesn't work with my brains. One or the other ways, one or the other always breaks. So Finn Bear isn't on X. Look, if you're not on X, which used to be Twitter, you've really got to get into it. I've got to admit, I, for the first few years when Twitter was out, I wasn't really into it. But now it's it's actually a big part of where I get information from because you're breaking away from it, especially when Elon Musk got it. Because when Elon Musk got it, you could actually speak the truth on it. There was a while when it was, you know, just one side of politics could speak and certain presidents were banned for speaking because the Taliban could have a Twitter account, but the president of the United States couldn't, which makes perfect sense. Unbelievable. But now that Elon Musk owns it, it truly is a freedom of speech platform. And if you say something that's not correct, they don't shut you down. They actually put a notice there saying uh, something along the lines of fact check or actually this this tweet was related to this thing. So it, it's actually really good. They don't just ban you for saying uh, all the stuff that we weren't allowed to say, like you know, gender or we'll go away from it. The wrong platform. On X I can say it, but here I can't. Um, Craig Patton says, X is freedom of speech. Get behind it. Well said, Craig. Absolutely. X is freedom of speech. JBS by... JBA Strike says, hi, Adam and everyone. Um, I'm sorry for tripping over my words, but I've actually, I've been in the sun all day uh, with baseball. And in the afternoon, I went straight to the gym and swam and sauna. But uh, we'll, we'll be fine. Jet Mitchell says, uh, hi, Adam. Uh, we'd like to see you versus BitBoy <laughs> in the octagon. All right, Jet, you've gone there. I, I wasn't going to bring it up, but a good crypto brother here, Jet. Okay, so looking at the screen man has anyone seen this like I, I thought it was a joke and i shared it on twitter by talking over each other i i just don't get what's happening here so i, I thought this was a joke i thought it was a meme but you've got bit boy here or ben armstrong because he doesn't like being called bit boy in a karate outfit <laughs> pretending to well not pretending he's actually doing karate and i, I thought oh, someone must have made a meme about it someone must have joked about it but it, it's actually legitimately serious and now he's it I, I think what i perceive is that he's now picking a fight with his former partner as in not woman partner business partner and <laughs> you know like i i did martial arts for many years many years i, I was on the state team for a while and this is up before my military training <laughs> You, you can just see, it's like for, for soldiers, if you see someone, how they hold a rifle, the second they hold it, you can see if they're trained in it. it it's just so obvious. Um, anyway, it's the same with all sports. You know, if you see someone swing a baseball bat or a tennis racket, you can, those who know the sport, they, they know well, this person's got experience. But when you see what this guy is doing and the way he's, like, watch the screen now, he's about to do a, a roundhouse kick. I think it's a roundhouse kick. I don't even know what it is, but he's, it just reminds me of a fat little kid. Look at that. Oh, man, it's so bad. But but he's picking fights with people. Like, he wants to be violent with people. And I'm just like, what's going on here, man? Like, this was a guy that was, like, number one in crypto for so long. This is the guy who used to speak about family and, dry, and church and God as he drove to church in his Lamborghini and looking after people. But now it's picking fights on the internet. Uh, and Steve J says, turn it off. I feel sick. Yeah, but I think Steve J dragged me out of this. It's all on Twitter. There's so much you're not seeing on Twitter. Attila says, BitBoy's videos remind me of those really old karate auditions on YouTube. Yeah, where the guy comes out and yells, I never lose, and makes a fool of himself. Oh, man. I, I tell you what, with that technique, you, you would you would literally stand back and, and just do a, a straightforward kick to the solar plexus and watch him collapse in a ball of bit fat um annex the crypto space says karate combat has up and has up only gaming gamble without losing your eight coin but get to keep the fight wins oh is there, there's a lot of gaming coins okay so it's, it's probably a good segue into gaming coins so and steve jay's laughing at me for pulling me out of that hole so we get ready for the gaming coins i think gaming coins are really exciting like the the project i was talking about uh, and mal i have to register the the platform but i, I think gaming tokens it's going to be really exciting because it's going to be a, it's borderline between gaming and gambling. 
And you know, gaming that's where you go to a poker machine and they say it's a gaming machine. No, it's it's a gambling machine. But when you go into the crypto space, you're going to see this really weird overlap of crypto, web three, gaming, and gambling. Now you might say everything that we're doing right now in the crypto land is gambling, and I'd agree with that. You know, life is a gamble. You know, do you go left or do you go right when you go down that street? Do you ask this person out or that person out? Do you get this career or that career? Do you get a degree in underwater basket weaving or engineering? Jeez, it's so tough. Which one would you choose? But all of it is a, a risk. But when it comes to investing in crypto, you've now got part of it is a game. Part of it is Web3. Part of it is the future of money. Part of it is a global reserve. But then some of it just owns it and says, right, we're just going to be a gaming coin and a, a gaming gambling coin. And I don't mean like a gaming coin like the Met, like a Decentraland. I mean, just like Rollbit might be a good one to look at or the, the coin I'm looking at with Chicken 10. I, I think all of these platforms, there's just so much that we don't know. Think about when the internet came out. Some of you can't remember. Some of you can. Some can remember better than others. So the internet came out and we didn't really understand what it was. It was like, is it this email thing? What, what's this internet? Then we had the dot-com bubble and everything crashed. And the dot-com bubble said, well, oh, the internet is kind of a bit of a scam. And I think it wasn't like 10 years later until you kind of had Google and further on you had um, uh, all, all the things. So Google, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix. Netflix was even further down. But that, that was years after the dot-com bubble, years after the dot-com bubble. And now what's happening with crypto is that we think that we know what it is. So we think, oh, it's a daily trader. Uh, we think it's a global reserve. Uh, we think it's a gaming coin. Uh, we think it's a gambling coin. Uh, we think it's a scam. We think it's just a pump and dump. Well, it's kind of all of those things and none of those things and the layer to all the things that are coming in the future. So it's a big rant to say, I, I don't even think we understand what's coming just as we didn't understand what the internet would bring us when it first came out. It's only just getting started. Okay, let's get straight into the technicals. I'll just leave a little marker here so I can remember. Rove says, uh, hi, Adam, a big fan of Red Fox and Mana. Red Fox has been around for ages and it's good, it used to have good staking wards, and I do like Mana as well. I've got, I have a lot of Mana. I agree with you. Uh, Riley says, hi, Adam. Do you know why Unibright was delisted from CoinSpot? Yes. Yeah, so the, the main reason why a coin is listed from these, uh, a coin is delisted from CoinSpot or any platform for that matter is when the volumes get too low or something happens that's too risky. So it's one of two reasons. Riley, it's because the volumes were too low. They, there was simply not enough trading of it. So it's like, nah, we'll get rid of it. Or something happened that compromised the project in the background. And what can also happen, and I, I can't substantiate this, but if that company has a big conflict with um, uh, Coinspot or Binance or Coinbase or Coinjar or all the platforms out there, they can actually say, we're delisting your coin. Because here's the thing. You could make any coin. You could make cable coin. There you go. Just make it, I just pick up something random on my desk and say, make cable coin. As long as you got it on an exchange, if you're the founder, you're making money. That's the real thing. If, if you want to, so don't now go into the next dimension of just instead of buying and selling. If you could make a coin, as long as you could get it listed, you're in for millions. You're in for absolutely millions. And I'm not talking about a DEX. I'm not talking about like something with Uniswap. I'm talking like a mainstream trading platform. If you could do that, man, you get millions. But it gets to a point where the volume's too low and no one's buying it. So the de the the kex or the sex however you want to describe it cex centralized exchange they cut it away and they say no nah, it didn't do anything but what's good, very good about coin spot is that if they stop selling a coin you can typically still keep your coin there and sell it later and that's very good i do like that where i've seen with other exchanges where they say we're delisting this coin now if you don't get this coin off in time we're going to cut it away as in you're going to lose that coin so that's why you know if they delist it on coin spot at least you can take it out later I remember a coin that they, man, there's been a, a, a few coins that have delisted and, and I've had them and I haven't sold them straight away. In fact, I've sold them much later for tax harvesting and I've still managed to liquidate that coin. So it is what it is. Yeah, Steve J runs, uh, raises fun fair. Yep, I, I've got a bit of fun fair. Solar Roller, Triple Eight says evening Stokesikens. Stoke Thank you. Uh, Solar Roller. 
<laughs> underwater. Uh, Quintron says underwater basket engineering, maybe. Yeah, let's let's see if we can get that as a degree. The future degrees, they'll just get anything. Um, Balzas Caddy says, hey, Adam, oi, oi, oi. Do you think it is accurate that the US and China government are top Bitcoin holders? US government, 207,189. BTC China government, 194,000. Okay, so... Only speculation. So part one, no, the number one holder is Satoshi. He has a million coins. So that answers part of the question. Number two, I would think that there'd be some, would uh, used to be boys, so 18-year-old kids back in the day who mined crap loads of Bitcoin who would have more than that. Uh, number three, America did have a lot of Bitcoin when they seized it from the, the orange, I was going to say the something else uh, when they see it from silk road but they sold it on the market so the reality is america got rid of a lot of its coins however maybe there's something going on in the background um but 194,000 and 207,000 in the big picture isn't a lot compared to what others have and uh, noting that we think we've lost about 6 million bitcoins and the only way we think we know hang on, the only way we know that we've lost some coins is because people have admitted it so those guys who had, you know, I had 500,000 Bitcoins on my laptop and my girlfriend threw it out. So those ones we know and we can substantiate. We can see the on-chain analytics and we can have a human being coming forward and saying, yep, I lost these coins. The other ones we speculate they've been lost because you look on chain and they haven't moved. They were mined back in like 2010, 2011. And since then they haven't moved. And that indicates, it can't substantiate, but it indicates that they've been lost. So good question. That's a long way of saying, I don't know. Uh, Attila says, Mr. Stokes, I think I see three things. I think I see a bull flag. I see a, I see Bitcoin making levels slowly, making high levels, and a small channel with a 38, with that 38K as resistance. Attila, you've nailed it. So we're looking at the technicals now. You're looking at Bitcoin to a US dollars in daily candles. So let, let's go with the first one that Attila said. And I'll get rid of Attila's comment just so you can all see the screen. And I'll get rid of the ticker because one of you asked me to do that when we're doing this. Okay, so now you've got a clean screen. Okay. The, the most exciting thing for me is, first of all, let, let's look at this yellow line that's running across the top. Now, I drew this yellow line in weeks ago, and I said, this is the line of resistance that we need to get through. And you can see that it, it's tested it. It tested it once here, one. It tested it again here, two. It did it again here, three. And now it's tested it again, four. And what I say tested again, because you, I always... For my TA with daily candles on Bitcoin, I always give plus or minus three to five percent. You know, because people are all right, what's the exact point? I say, well, look, I'm going to give it this point here, which is thirty-eight and a half thousand dollars, and I'm going to say plus or minus three to five percent because you, you got to have some room there. Now, if I drag this yellow line across this line of resistance, hang on, I'll go back to my pointing tool, I'll grab that yellow line, I'll highlight it, and I'll dra oops, drag it across, keeping it where it was. Now, you might say, well, hang on, Adam, it's broken through. No, because in fact, again, 3 to 5% is what I'm playing with. And we now have a red candle forming here. So looking at the, ooh, just gone green. But according to this data set, we're, we're just testing this line again. But it show, what does it show? It shows compression. We have a crap load of compression here. So I'm going to now bring up, I, I normally, I used to bring up my pitchfork, but when I'm on dark mode, because I know some of you, I know I'm in bed with some of you, <laughs> as in you're watching this in bed. Settle down, kids. Not, nothing sus on this show. This is a family show. But what I'll draw instead of a pitchfork, I'll just draw a parallel channel. So you can see here to here. That's the parallel channel I'm talking about. We have a lot of compression in this, a lot of compression. So it's like a, a pressure cooker where it's about to break out. Now, I'll just get rid of that for us. And then I'm also going to draw, sorry to get too much into technicals, but it, it's exciting stuff. What Attila was saying is he reckons he can see a bit of a bull flag here. Let me just change the color to that. Uh, hang on. Trend line. He reckons we, he can see, and I've done a green one here. He reckons he can see a bit of a bull flag forming here. Is that what you see, Attila? Is that what you're looking at? That's what I'm looking at as well. So we've got... The testing the line of resistance of $38,500, not one, not twice, not three, but four times. We've got compression with it tracking sideways, and we've got a bit of a bull flag forming.
but it's the, the masks aren't very big and the masks aren't very big because the compression is so great the compression is huge if we zoom right out like let's go all the way back like look what's happening here you've got this big traffic jam where we are at the moment and this big traffic jam where it's not going doing anything except kind of tracking sideways is because of what's happening with blackrock and the sec and etf so straight into the news top stories this week us officials announced 4.3 billion dollars settlement with binance plea deal with cz so let's do cz first and we'll get into blackrock binance and its co-founder shang peng zhao or cz have reached a settlement over criminal and civil cases with the United States Department of Justice. CZ will plead guilty to one felony charge as part of the negotiated agreement. It happened so quick. You think how long FTX took? It shows you how different this one is. Um, Attorney General Merrick Garland, finally a name that we can just say with ease, announced a settlement claiming Binance policies allowed criminals involved in illicit activities to move stolen funds through exchanges. As part of the settlement, CZ announced on X, formerly Twitter, that he had stepped down as CEO and that Binance's global head of regional, of regional markets, Richard Teng, will assume the position. He added he was proud to point out that US officials didn't allege that Binance misappropriated fund or manipulated markets. Let me just pause on that sentence there. So the difference between, well, there's a huge difference between scam bankrupt fraud and CZ. But in, in case you're like, well, hang on, what's really happened here? In the first instance, Binance never stole your money, whereas uh, FTX did. Binance never stole your money. The, the real allegation is that they were doing all of this movement of money and all value around the world. And some of that money may have been used for bad. Now, as we know, in the main financial space, that's exactly what banks do. If you if you start moving billions of dollars around the world, you can kind of get away with it. If you look at how money moves through HSBC and other big banking institutions, bad money is moved everywhere. And what do I mean by bad money? Money that's used for bad stuff. Now, what may have happened here is on Binance, the same thing happened. You've got billions of dollars moving through this platform and maybe a few percent of it was used by bad people doing bad things. And the truth is, I, I think that's highly likely. I think it's highly likely that all the money that goes around the economy, a few percent of it is always used for bad things. And you look at the US dollar as an example. US dollars in cash, a massive portion of that is used for bad things. The, remember this study that we did or we know the data of I can't remember the percentage, but there's a huge percentage of physical American dollar bills that are laced with cocaine because people were rolling it up to snort cocaine. Am I going to strike for saying cocaine? Um, with rolling up $100 bills or $1 bills or any bills and snorting cocaine through it. You also have prostitution and drug dealing and all this other stuff that the US dollar is used for. And then you go, the biggest step is where it's used for, you know, sending pallets of money to Iran or sending pallets of money to Afghanistan for the president to flee. So, or drug deals internationally. So massive amounts of cash, the US dollar, are used for bad things. But of course, the US government now is saying, well, hang on, Binance, you use your platform and bad things could have happened through there. But he was proud to point out, that is CZ, that officials didn't allege that Binance misappropriated or manipulated funds. So one, they didn't steal funds. And two, they didn't manipulate markets where FTX did both of those. They manipulated markets and stole funds. Reading on, uh, CZ was released on bail and is battling government efforts to bar his return to the United Arab Arab Emirates to be with his family. His sentencing is scheduled for February. So I, I can catch up for that. He, he is allowed to go back to the UAE. He's already said, I don't want to use the UAE as cover. I'm, I will turn up in court. I will do the right thing. I will face the allegations. I've got nothing to hide. Let me go back to my family. And the, the judge was like, yeah, okay, fair enough. So he'll come back. He'll face the, the penalty of probably more money. I doubt he'll go to jail. Um, and, and ultimately, Binance kicks on. And if we look at Binance right now, Binance is at $234. It's really not a big hit if we bring up the chart here for Binance. I scroll down here as it loads itself up. You're looking, we'll go to one month. So one month, here's the thing. So the, the price of Binance right now is $234 according to this data set. One month ago, Binance was $224. So to put things in perspective, Binance is now worth more than what it was a month ago. Think about that. 
you've just had the the head charged four point three billion dollar fine. He's got to appear in court next year, and the and the coin is worth more now than what it was thirty days ago. It's a testament to the coin. It is a testament to the entire ecosystem, and this is. After everything that happened with Binance, with, you know, US Binance or Binance US was taken down, um, Binance Australia, they stopped the staking rewards, Binance World has come under a lot of pressure. In my mind, I'm putting it out here, Binance will have a huge position in Asia and the Middle East. And I think this was just America saying, clear the way for uh, American companies to dominate this space, but it, it won't take away what's going to happen in the future with respect to Binance in the Middle East, in Asia, and Western nations that will accept it, or at least allow you to do something on it. Now, for me, I, I took Binance off the crypto.land a long time ago, and the reason why I did is because I foresaw this was going to happen. I've been saying for years, it's going to be attacked. It's too risky. Pull your money off. And, and I, th I made a really good call. I made a really good call on that one, and a lot of you took your money off Binance. I think you can still get it off. But if I if I were you and I had any money on Binance, I'd probably pull it off just to be sure. I'd just get rid of it. Just th There's too many exchanges out there. Now, another thing that you guys need to do, you need to be ready for the bull run that's going to happen. So what you need to start doing is start registering more accounts that you can trade with. I will be launching another account that you can trade with on the crypto.land. So that's www.thecrypto.land where you can do everything crypto safely on one simple and secure site. I only list the platforms that I trust. And at the moment, I've listed Bybit and uh the and coin spot but because i'm an international community here we are an international community i'm going to give you more platforms now the reason why you want these platforms register now get your kyc sorted get all your bank details listed if you're going to do that maybe transfer some stable coins not much because remember don't keep any money on a platform not too much but what will happen is during this bull run, something will trigger very quickly and someone will say, quick, go buy cable coin. And you'll say, where's cable coin? You look at CoinSpot and cable coin's not there. You look at Bybit, cable coin's not there. You look at somewhere and, and you don't have cable coin. And it's like, oh, it's on this platform. Luckily, I registered for it and you can make the move very quickly. If you don't do it now, what's going to happen is when the bull run kicks off and someone says, quick, go get PenCoin and you run out to go, PenCoin, like, oh, which exchange is on? You ask Uncle Adam and I'll say, it's on Blue Exchange. And you're like, yeah, yeah I registered with Blue Exchange before because it was on the crypto.land and I can buy that thing very quickly. So this is the time. It's just like, you know, get ready for, you know, I guess going on a holiday. You start packing the car now or... um. We call it battle prep in the military. Before you actually go out to battle, you you, you get all your stuff so sorted. You get the right weapons out. You clean all the stuff. You load your magazines. You check you got all your equipment. You fill the vehicles. It's battle prep. You get it ready. So when the when they say go, you're good to go. And that's what you need to do right now for what's about to happen in the markets. It's about to go ballistic. You're not going to need to buy some coins very quickly that you don't have on the exchange that you use every day. So you want multiple exchanges. Just don't put too much money or any. Some will say don't put any money exchanges. Yeah, look. I do keep money on exchanges, not much, not the majority, not much. But the reason why I do is because I've been doing this for a long time. I only do it on exchanges that I trust. And when I need to pull the trigger per se, bang, I can do it immediately. I don't need to worry about transferring. In fact, I can remember when Dogecoin was pumping. Here's a good example. Years ago when Dogecoin pumped, no one could buy it. And the reason why no one could buy it is because most people hadn't registered on an exchange and the whole ecosystem got clogged up. And some people were saying, oh, that's a, that's a scam and that's a scam. No, no, no. It was like literally a massive traffic jam. It was like a million cars trying to go down a single lane highway all at once. It couldn't handle it. But for me, because I was already in position, I'd already made my move and I'd already put my market orders in and I already had a wallet full of it. It was no problem for me. I was like on the, I don't know, transit lane going next to it where I just went straight through. VIP service. And it wasn't because it was me, Adam Stokes. It was just because it was me, someone who'd prepared and was already in the exchange. Because remember, Dogecoin, when that pumped, that actually brought a lot of new money into the space. People were never in crypto. They're just like, oh, Wall Street, what was it? Um, Wall Street bets and um, GameStop and Elon Musk. It was like the perfect storm where it all happened at once. And heaps of newbies were like, quick, I need to get into it. It's like, well, you got to you got to register first, you know, not register. You've got to join a site and then you've got to put your KYC on there. And by the time they'd done it, everyone had already done the run. Everyone had made money. And by, and by the time they got into there, they were buying a top. They were buying Dogecoin at 
whatever it was, that stupid price. Okay, on to the next story. Um, now we go to BlackRock. BlackRock met with SEC officials to discuss spot Bitcoin ETF. So isn't it funny how BlackRock can meet with the SEC, but others, when they say, hey, can we meet SEC and have a chat? And they're like, no, nah, here's a fine. Total coincidence. Total coincidence. Representatives from BlackRock and NASDAQ met with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission to discuss the proposed rule allowing the listings of a spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund or ETF. BlackRock provided a presentation detailing how the firm could use an in-kind or in-cash redemption model for its iShares Bitcoin trust. Many reports have suggested the SEC could be nearing a decision on a spot BTF, BTC ETF for listings on US markets. SEC officials also met with Grayscale representatives. Hmm, what can you do that before? This week to discuss the listing of a Bitcoin ETF. BlackRock is one of many firms with a spot crypto ETF with spot Bitcoin ETF applications in the SEC pipeline awaiting a response, including Fidelity, Wisdom Tree, Invesco, Galaxy, Valkyrie, Van Eck, and Bitwise. So some of you have said, um, which company should we invest in? Uh, I, I would never tell you because that would be financial advice. But if you if you think some companies are going to pump because of a, a back spot backed Bitcoin ETF being approved, those companies, according to this data set and many other data sets, are BlackRock, Fidelity, Wisdom Tree, Invesco Galaxy, Valkyrie, Van Eck, and Bitwise. No, my thought on Bitwise. But the other way to do it is just to buy Bitcoin itself. Some say when the ETFs are approved, if they're approved, that it'll actually be like when the gold, so go back in time, gold spot-backed ETFs were approved. And what actually happened was people bought the news and sold the rumor. Hang on, bought the rumor and sold the news. That is, a going back in time, a gold spot-backed ETF is going to be approved. So lots of people bought gold. It pumped the price of gold and then it dumped. But then later, it quickly went back and to the moon. So there is a theory that some people believe that the same thing could in fact happen with Bitcoin. That is the Bitcoin spot back ETF. People will run up to it now and buy it, and then it will dump after it's approved. That is buying the rumor, selling the news. I don't think that's going to happen. I really don't. It, it could do. So just my opinion. You'll hear from my opinion sometimes. Um, my opinion is that won't happen because the, the run on these markets will be too fast. It'll be too great. Because what happens is when all these big companies uh, get their ETF approved, if it's approved, they will all need to get the Bitcoin. You need the Bitcoin to back up what you're, you're saying that you're selling. So it's not paper. It's not futures. It's not that crap stuff. It's the real stuff. You need the Bitcoin straight away. Now, on top of that, if we go over to the debt, uh, sorry, the halving clock here. So the next Bitcoin halving, we've got 143 days till the next halving. Typically, we run up before the halving. But then the mainstream, this is the April 17, 2024. That's when the halving is due to take place. Remember, halving is not calculated on, on time. It's counted, it's calculated on blocks. But essentially, we're coming up to those 840,000 blocks, which is roughly about April 17, 2024. Um, that, that can be delayed or brought forward just a little bit, but I emphasize it's not calculated on time. It's comp, comp, uh, calculated on blocks. And not all blocks are exactly 10 minutes. Anyway, that aside, doesn't really matter. 143 days, the Bitcoin halving happens. So it's not, even without the ETF, even without the ETF, history shows that just before the halving, it does run up. Then after the halving, halving it goes ballistic, these four-year cycles. So with or without the ETF, moon time. But when the ETF is approved, if it's approved, the next thing that we ask is what will our overlords at the SEC do? Will they approve just Grayscale? Because um, who else isn't there? There's two missing here. Who's missing? Arc, Arc should be in there. So where's Arc Finance? Because they were the first ones to put their application in. So will they approve BlackRock or Arc or both or all at once? Will they stage it? And I reckon, in my opinion, I don't think they'll stage it because I reckon they'll be, <laughs> I reckon they'll be sued. If they let one company go first and not all the other companies, particularly if someone dropped the line like BlackRock, because America is so litigious, I think there'd be a very good case to sue the SEC to say, 
you slowed down our, hang on. First of all, we were in first. Then you put someone at the end of the line. You allowed them to jump forward. They got the market share. We have now lost trillions of dollars in business because you dragged your feet. So what's the alternative? The alternative is, there's three outcomes, just to be clear. One, it's denied and no one gets an ETF. That's one outcome. Two, the ETF is approved and they do it in stages. BlackRock, you're first. ARK, you get to go second. Then Van Eck, then Bitwise, then Wisdom Tree, then Invesco Galaxy, then Valkyrie, then Fidelity. That's the other option. The third option is that it's approved and they go, right, you're all clear to go now. And I actually think it's going to be the last one. So option one, it's not approved. No one gets an ETF. Two, someone gets to go first and they do a stage approved ETF. Or three, it's just a free for all. You're all good to go, ready, set, go, bang. And you can see a lot of these companies have already put on their tickers for spot-backed ETFs so they can go straight away. Straight away. Now, I warn you about a scam that has just been coming out. There is a coin that's coming out and you'll see the scam come out because it's a Wall Street meme scam. So remember I released a video about Wall Street memes being a scam. That was a coin. They've now replicated that model again and they've made it a BTC ETF coin. So the, the, the latest scam is a BTC ETF coin. Because How do I know? Because they wrote to me and asked me to advertise for it. And I'm like, and clearly my name as a YouTube commentator is on a database because this company sent me a thing saying basically exactly what they did for Wall Street memes. How much do you want? Shill this coin, essentially. They didn't use the word shill. They said, make a bullish video on it. How much do you want? And then they gave me two options. One, we'll pay you per video. Or two, we'll give you a massive commission for everyone that you bring on to this thing. And I'm like, man, these dirty pricks. But here's the thing. It's it's just a, a copy. It's a copy and paste of Wall Street memes. It's like the same artist. It's the same um, stage ICO phase where, you know, you, you put your money in now and you're going to get cheaper coins. You wait a bit longer and it'll get more expensive and then it'll launch and everyone will be rich. And, and it's the same model. It's the same artist. It's the same people writing to me and they're just going to do it again. So it's another scam. Other people will come in and they'll say, well, hang on, BTC ETF. That's what everyone's been talking about on the news. So BTC ETF, I'm going to buy this coin. So a lot of people are going to buy this coin. It's going to, it's, it's pump and dump. It's a textbook pump and dump. It's happening again. But here's the thing. This is where it gets weird. I've got to keep it real. And maybe if you buy early. And I'm not shilling this coin because they've, they've offered me money. And as you know, I don't take money for advertising. Particularly when I know it's a scam. The truth is, if we go over to... Uh, looking at the hex price now, just because we're at coin market crap here at 0 0.006 of a cent so a sixth of a cent was 0 0.006 of a dollar so it's a sixth of a cent but if we bring up wsm which is wall street memes and we look at all so you're looking at the wall street memes chart here so that's a classic pump and dump a classic pump and dump so it's down down 43.4 percent and there's a lot of youtubers that took money from this company uh including wendy o and the, the coin did exactly what I warned you about. It's a pump and dump. And there it is. It went up and down. But here's the thing. If you bought this coin early and you sold it on day one, you, you probably made about 100%, which isn't much for a pump and dump. Normally a pump and dump is, you know, you should be, <laughs> you should be expecting to make five to 10,000%. So this is why it was a terrible one. They did it during a crypto winter. Their reach wasn't that big because not many people were involved. They they dumped it, I would argue, too soon. And here you can see Wall Street memes has gone up 43 point. Sorry, it's down 43% from its all-time high. Some people have got it locked up in staking. There's not much volume on it. There's really not much happening around this coin at all. It's got a fully diluted market cap. That is if they sold everything of $45 million. But the total supply is about 99%, uh, 95% of what's already been of what the max supply is. What does that mean? It's got a supply of 2 billion and 1.99 billion have been released into the ecosystem. What am I saying? This coin is dead, but the new model where they're doing the exact same thing again is going to be a pump and dump 
But I think the next one will probably be a better pump. And I'm, you know, I feel so dirty telling you this, but I've got to keep it real. If you got in, you could probably buy, I think it's called BTC ETF or ETF BTC. No, I'm pretty sure it's BTC ETF. And it's just a cut and paste of what you're looking at here. Because it's got a good name. Newbies will come in. They'll see that coin. They'll get the email. They'll have heard about it on the news. They're like, oh, I heard about this Bitcoin thing. And I heard about this ETF thing. And I heard about BlackRock getting into it. Oh, this is the coin. And they'll get the coin. And it'll probably be 100% pump and dump. That is, it'll go up 100% and then dump. But maybe the new one will go up three to 400%. And this is why it's so difficult. Even if you know it's a scam coin, which in my mind, it absolutely is. But you could still probably make 100% of your money within, I want to say a few days, but that's not true because you have to put your money in now and then wait till it launches. And that can be a month. So the actual time that it, it launches and you dump it, that's a day or two days. But to get your money in early and then wait for it to launch, big risk. Big risk. These things are coming up, my crypto brothers and sisters. You've got to be ready for these scams. Wall Street means is absolutely a scam, in my opinion. And every single crypto commentator that promoted this to you is disgusting. But what I'm telling you now is that they're doing it again. And even if you know a coin's a pump and a dump, but those who've been in for a long time, you know exactly what I'm saying. They're like, yep, I know it's a pump and dump. Yep, I know it's dodgy. Yeah, I can make 100% easily. But if it's a real big pump and dump, you can make 5,000%. There's heaps of, what was that other one? I think it was Moonbeam. No, what was it? Moon River. Was that it? River. Moon River. I think that was it. the guy that's going to court. I don't remember. River Moon. Moon River. A massive pump and dump. Help me out. River. Uh, no, was it Moon River? Maybe it wasn't Moon River. But the guys are in a court. The, maybe it was. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> oh, God. So what, what? it came in at about uh, $160, went all the way up to $427, and is now $6.19. I think it was another one. The, the guys are going to court for it. But, you know, if you can read these charts and you can see what's happening in there, doesn't matter if it's pump and dump. If you, if you know what's going to happen and you're willing to take the risk, it's, it's not Moon River, the one I'm thinking about. What was it? Safe Moon. That was it. Let's look at Safe Moon. Safe Moon. Was it Safe Coin? Not Safe Moon. It, it's been taken down. So Safe Moon is gone. That, that, that was the one. I, I think it was like, what was it? 20 or 30,000%. It, it was like insane. And it was a full scam. It was a full pump and dump. And the guys are in, uh, they're either in jail now or they're being held in custody. But, but the truth is, if you had got in there and bought it and run it up and sold it at the top, even though it was a scam, you could make a lot of money. It's, and this is where crypto is not so black and white. It's not, pe people want to say it's this or it's that. It's like, uh, as I said at the beginning of the video, it's kind of all of it. You've got to really think in four dimensions. This is why I talk about politics here and, I talk about understanding human psychology. Uh, speaking of human psychology, as I go on another rant here, you know what show I've been watching recently? I, I can't believe I'm watching it. It's trash TV and it's so good. It's Squid Game. Now, not Squid Game, the series, but Squid Game, the actual game. It's on Netflix. And they do Squid Game with real people for real money. And I think it's every time someone is eliminated, they put, is it $100,000 into the kitty? Or 10000 I think it's 10,000, but the prize pool is like $4.25 million. And man, I don't know what it is about the show. And I was thinking about it actually today when I was swimming, blowing big, scary bubbles in my deep meditative bubble state. I know what it is. Why it fascinates me is because you can see the psychology and actions of people when that much money is at stake. That's what it was. I'm like, this is why I like this show so much. Because first of all, it's made very well. And Squid Game, I really enjoy that the real series, but now the squid game game where they've got real people playing for real money. They don't murder the people. They just get <laughs> a little explosion happens on their chest and then they're eliminated. So don't worry, they're not killing them, but they're taking it really serious. They're taking it really serious. And you know, people are crying, people are breaking down, people are getting scared. People are backstabbing. People are, are getting violent. Like it, and it's all over money. And it's like, wow, watch what these people are doing with the amount of money that's going around through this space. It's insane. It's incredible. Next article, Bitcoin user pays three... Oh, yeah, this one. I heard about this. 
Bitcoin user pays $3.1 million transaction fee for 139 BTC transfer. This is this can happen to the best of us. Remember, if, if you haven't been scammed in crypto, you haven't been in crypto, but equally, even this isn't a scam. This is just not checking the transaction. A Bitcoin user paid $3.1 million in fees. I, I'd actually heard it was $1 million, but according to this data source, it's $3.1 million in fees for transferring 139.42 BTC. The transaction fee is the eighth highest in Bitcoin's 14-year history. A wallet address tied, hang on, a wallet address tried transferring 139.42 BTC to pay more than half the actual value of the transaction fee. The destination address only received 55.77 BTC. The mining pool, Ant Pool, captured the absurdly high mining fee on block 81,000 Hang on, 818,087. This is the largest Bitcoin transaction fee ever paid in dollar terms, knocking off Paxos September transfer of half a million dollars. Okay, so what happened here? This dude's transferring 140 BTC, right? And he didn't look at the transaction fee. Something went wrong where he did it at a maximum peak or something came up and he was doing it in speed. And the miners said through automation, this is the fee of 55.77 BTC. And without looking, he's like, yep, cook, click. And 55.77 BTC is the equivalent of $3.1 million in today's money. What is that in the future? Like, imagine I said, here's 55 Bitcoin to, for you to cash out in 20 years. Man. Now, for all you Bitcoin haters out there, I know you'll be saying, ha ha, you got ripped off. No, 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 no. It, it, it's, it's a part of crypto. Remember, Ethereum. So, it, well, all of you who trade ethereum or anything built on ethereum think of your gas fees you don't have to pay the gas fee that's offered at the time like at, at the peak of the bull run or the peak of traffic on the ethereum network when i do a transaction i i, I don't pay the top gas fee like if it's too much i'm like and i'm not in a rush i'm like no i'll wait i'll come back when it's less peak time and some of you are my private students I, i've talked you through this you i've got you ready to do a transaction we're sharing screen and I say, just wait and watch what happens. And the transaction fee, just in 10 seconds, can go $150, $12, $180, $170. It's just so random. It's not. There's no pattern. There's no linear. It's just the amount of demand on the network and how much you want done. And what happened with Bitcoin is that when you're doing that transfer, check, double check, recheck, and check again. First three, last three, and the fee involved. And if you don't like it, just go, no, nah, I'll do it later. Or wait reset or refresh 55.77 btc now there is talk that and i doubt it will happen but it could happen is that ant pool who captured the absurdly high mining fee they could pay it back they could say look yeah look the fee was supposed to be ten dollars we've charged you 3.1 million dollars we'll give it back to you or it could go the other way and say no uh we had a deal. We put the deal on the screen. You accepted the deal. You paid us 55 Bitcoin. They're gone. I think it will be the latter, but I have heard of mining pools in the past where miners have said, yeah, look, giving charging 50 Bitcoin for a few hundred Bitcoin to move. That's too much. We'll give it back to you. It could happen. I doubt it will happen, but imagine that. $3.1 million in fees. So slow down. It's like I said, when, when all of you get rich, remember I told you ages ago, and I'll tell you again, you're about to come into stupid amounts of money and you're like, oh, what do I do? And I just say, just slow down, just stop, stop, just <laughs> apply this, apply safe, lay the weapon down and step back from the firing range. Just, just step back and wait. Because when you're sitting on big money, you're like, oh, I'll get this car or I'll do this and I'll do that. And I'm just like, well, slow down. And they're like, oh, I'll go to a financial advisor. And the financial advisor goes, yeah, you should put it all into this. And you're like, okay. And the financial advisor makes a massive commission and you lose all your money. So please, when you're doing these transfers, check the first three and last three. Check it a hundred times, especially with this much money. When, you, when you're moving 139 Bitcoin and you've just lost a $3.1 million in fees. And again, that's today's money. That's today's value. What, what will that be worth in the future? If Bitcoin goes to $10 million, or oh, don't be stupid, well, we'll see. That guy's just given up $550 million <laughs> oh, God, worth of Bitcoin in a transaction fee. Now, I do wonder, though, 
think of it this way because fees are a tax deduction could he now have and i doubt he would but could he have a 3.1 million dollar tax credit for future gains i don't know we should get my accountant on could he carry that 3.1 million dollars in fees forward to offset gains in the future and i mentioned that because a lot of you you're going to lose money you're going to get scammed uh, you're going to make a bad trade you're going to do something dodgy where you've clicked on the wrong thing. You're not going to have your full address in there and you're going to lose money. It happens. Don't worry. I've lost lots of money here. Made way more than I've lost. But trust me, I've lost a lot of money here. A lot. But the mindset is, well, that's part of business. I've made more than I've lost and I can carry that loss as a credit depending on the situation. And I want you to do the same. If you make a move and it doesn't work out, maybe you've got an opportunity to carry it as a tax credit. And that tax credit can you know, relieve the stress of the money you just lost. Still bloody tax though. SEC sues, SEC sues Kraken. Oh, SEC suing someone. I haven't heard this before. SEC sues Kraken, alleging it's an unregistered exchange, mixes user funds. Oh God, here we go again. Kraken. The SEC has sued Kraken. They're just suing everyone. Uh, alleging it co-mingled customer funds and failed to register with this regulator as a securities exchange broker, dealer, and clearing agency. Additionally, the SEC alleged Kraken's business practices are deficient. Uh, hang on. The SEC alleged Kraken's business practices and deficient internal controls saw the exchange co-mingle up to $33 billion worth of customer assets with its own. Uh, uh, uh. We've seen this before, co-mingling funds. The SEC said this resulted in a significant risk of loss for its clients. In a follow-up blog post, Kraken said the SEC's commingling accusations were no more than Kraken spending fees it had already earned, and the regulator doesn't allege any user funds are missing. Okay, so we don't know if it's true or not, but this is where I get angry, where the SEC accuses someone of commingling funds. So let's break it down. If you don't know what commingling funds is, that is... Let's say I was a bank and you deposit money into the bank. I'm supposed to keep your funds there for you. Now, of course, banks don't get, have to follow this rule. This is why I get pissed off with the banks because they actually do commingle funds legally and they lend out money that's yours to someone else. That is commingling funds. In the real essence of a bank, so hang on, I'll finish what commingling funds is. With FTX, people deposited their cash or whatever, stable coins or cryptos onto the exchange. And that exchange should have just been held on wallets, just held in place on the exchange. But what scam bankrupt fraud did was he took the customer's money and he commingled it with Alameda research. And if you actually look at the, the business layout, it was commingled with lots of different businesses doing lots of different things. And the user's money was used for different things. They commingled the funds to dodge up the books, to make other investments, to try and get really rich they co-mingle the funds and that's a big no-no but banks do it and banks can do it they're not breaking the laws they can take in a real bank what they should do they should only lend out money that's theirs so you know a bank could make money through interest payments they could make money through fees they could make money through uh, late fees as well and transaction fees and all of the fees around banks and the interest around banks and if they lend out just that money, yeah, that's okay because that's their money. But they don't do that. And this isn't a conspiracy. This is what they actually do. They actually co-mingle all the funds. They co-mingle your savings deposit, their savings deposit, that loan, this loan, that loan. And then they go and lend it out to other people or they invest it in other things. And when it all falls to pieces and it's like, we've got no money, the government bails them out. That's, that's what happens. Like, really, think about it. If banks weren't co-mingling funds, they would never need a bailout, ever. Ever. They would say, right, we've gone bust, but we've kept all, kept all the saving deposits of the creditors, which is you and me, mum and dad, everyone who's put money in there as a savings deposit. Yep, we didn't commingle those funds. We didn't fractionally reserve lend against them. Everyone's deposits are safe. We're out of business, but everyone, here's your money back. That's what would happen if they weren't commingling funds. But because banks do and can co legally commingle funds, when it all goes to poo, they're just like, 
hey, government, we screwed up. And the government goes, oh, well, you're too big to fail. And by the way, you're lending us money that you don't have anyway and we need. So, all right, we're going to bail you out with tax dollars. And when that didn't work or does work, and it's like, actually, instead of us, the tax man paying it, how about you just steal money from people's accounts? And that's where a bail-in law comes. That's where they go to all of your savings deposits and they say, right, we actually don't have the savings deposits there. So we're going to take 50% out of everyone's account who's got more than 100 bucks, 1,000 bucks or whatever, and we're just going to give it to ourselves. And essentially, all they're doing is writing off, we owe all you customers five billion dollars we're just going to cut that in half we only actually know you customers 2.5 billion dollars yet we're back in business Th that's what it is that's what banks do and so here you have sec and, and rightfully so i think commingling of funds should be cracked down upon onto old kraken if it's happened and ftx where it did happen but why can banks do it really why do banks get to do it but we can't H how about you just say no one can do it no one can commingle funds and by the way banks if you want to remain solvent, you can only lend out the money that you actually have. And that will create a lot of competition and no bail-in or bail-out laws required. It's all a scam. Speaking of scam, appeals court rejects scam bankrupt frauds bid for release. Good. Finally, we've got one win. Scam bankrupt fraud, aka Sam Bankman Freed, will stay jailed good after failing to convince a United States appellate uh, am I saying that word right, lawyers? Appellate court that he should be freed while his legal team appeals his conviction. We knew this was happening. Government prosecutors accused Bankman Freed of leaking Caroline Ellison's journal to the New York Times in July, which caused his bail to be revoked by a New York district court. Bankman Freed was found guilty on seven fraud and money laundering related charges on November 2. The former FTX CEO will remain behind bars while he awaits his sentencing on March 28 next year. Thank you, Judge, for keeping him in jail. And over Christmas as well. Good. The, the, the more I think about scam bankrupt fraud, I'm like, you animal. You prick. You know, you rich kid, privileged mofo. What you did to so... Not just everyone who lost. I didn't lose a cent in FTX. Oh, hang on. Maybe I did. Because it affected the whole market. No, I didn't sell. You only lose in a sell. But first of all, I had nothing to do with FTX. I didn't have any money on the platform and I didn't have any FTX tokens. I don't think. Maybe one somewhere. But I haven't sold anything. Therefore, I've never lost it on FTX. But all of us lost, even if you weren't involved in it, because the whole, the whole ecosystem was tainted. And the whole market's pulled back from it. So if you're a swing trader and you put in long positions and suddenly it all dumped because of what happened, it hurts so many people. And yet here he was saying that he was a savior. I'm going, I, and I knew, this is what actually caught me, um, got my ears pricked up a, a long time ago when he was like the savior. He goes, I'm going to donate 98% of my wealth. And I'm like, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is well before he came out. I never spoke about it publicly because it's just, I, but I do remember thinking it was weird. And I do remember saying to one of my mates, why doesn't he just donate it now? Like if you're already a billionaire and you don't want anything beyond your Toyota Corolla, why are you waiting to donate in the future? Why not just donate now? And, and that was a red flag that was flying in front of my face, but I, I didn't pick it up well enough. I didn't actually see it well enough. I remember thinking, that's weird. You could just donate it now. But I don't remember thinking... Oh, that proves he's a scammer. No, I, I didn't make that connection. I should have made that connection, but I failed to do that. But it's true in the sense that if you say I'm going to donate 98% of my wealth in the future and I don't want to be rich and you're already sitting on billions, well, just do it now. I oh, know I need that money for other stuff. Do you? Because you're making that much money. Scam back up for behind bars. Good. Over to the big scary bubbles. You're looking at monthly bubbles and we are in green. The biggest bubble that we see is gas. Oh, bloody hell, no, it's not. It's FTT. <laughs> How many times do I need to tell you in crypto anything can happen? FTT up 218%. That is the native token to the FTX nightmare that scam bankrupt fraud made. Blur is up 161%. If you don't know about Blur, I think there's another one called Blast, but Blur is essentially you. You put your Ethereum on their wallet and then you earn staking rewards in very simple terms. I've, I've over, oversimplified that, but essentially Blur is putting your Ethereum with them and you get staking rewards. Look, uh, I'm not going to be part of it. I mean, you could buy the token, which is different to putting your ETH there. 
but you know, where does the money come from? It's, it just looks a little bit concerning to me. Blur. A lot of people are doing it. They're moving their ETH over there. They're getting like a, a reward on it. They're getting the tokens paid on it. I wouldn't let go of my Ethereum. I'm not giving my Ethereum to another platform so they can give me, well, as Richard Hart would say, picking up pennies in front of freight trains. Just be careful with this one uh, because it's still not fully established. It's still not fully clear how it's going to work, and yet it's already pumping. So if you're thinking about putting your Ethereum on this platform, know that Uncle Adam isn't. Uh, still on the big scary bubbles. Blur is still is now the biggest gainer, according to this data set, up 69.5%. And over the day, uh, VET, well, good on your VChain, you're up 9.6. And Rose is up 9.1. Atom up 8.2. Okay, US debt clock is up at $33.756 trillion. Uh, we've got another secret here. And the secret, what do we got here? So the secret on the US debt clock says, we have done all we can do. Oh, God. And then on the other side, there's a military person saying it's not going to be enough. Ah, damn. <clears throat> the reason why I'm concerned is because the secret on the US debt clock is suggesting war is coming. I've been telling you that for over a year. Um. AG US Federal Silver Price Contain Division warning contents under pressure. Oh, what does it mean? Can someone interpret this for me? Is silver about to collapse as well? Is war going to kick off? Doesn't look good. Doesn't look good at all. Just make sure you're ready, people. Make sure you are ready. Uh, back to Coin 360 and to your comments. <clears throat> okay, so I've been talking for a while, so I don't know if we can go through all of them. Um, Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Coldrum says, happy Sunday, everybody. Steve J says, weekly cup and handle broke out, measured move 47K. <laughs> Ronnie says, yes, I can confirm it's a bull flag. Thank you. Steve J says, break of 38,000 led to 42, then 47. Yeah, I really want, so we're talking about the price of BTC breakout. I really want to see it get past that 38 and a half thousand. I, I want it to be comfortably past there for 24 hours. That, that's what I'm looking for. Um, JBA says, <laughs> I saw Safe Art on American Finance Channel the other day. Good to put a face to the name. How, how is old Safe Art? Jason Friskin says, when the rich screw the poor, they call it business. When the poor try to get justice, they call it crime. Ooh. And the police are the interface that prevents us stopping the injustice. Powerful words. Gaz, Binance new CEO is part of the WEF from my understanding. Oh, really? Okay, so from our agent in the field, Gaz is saying, that the new Binance CEO is part of the WEF. Maybe that's what's saving the price of Binance at the moment. Actually, it's Binance. Anthony, cleaning cleaning shop for the ETFs. Yep, they are cleaning up, getting ready for the ETF. Excuse me. I just got a call. All right, I'm back. Rather than coughing in your ear. God, I'm dying here. Jason says, just wondering, Uncle Adam, if the bull market starts in earnest at the end, at the start of 2024, how long do you think the bull cycle, bull market cycle will last for? Good question. So there's two parts to this. One, it, based on previous data, about a year, a bit less than a year. However, other people have said this will be the last hurrah. There is a belief. It's just a theory. I don't know. So I'm going to tell you two things. Actually, I'll tell you three. One, we, do, we repeat what we've done on the other cycles and it's it runs up for about six to 12 months and we all make a lot of money and then it all dumps. Two, the other theory is this is the last hurrah in the sense that this will, once these ETFs are approved and all the Wall Street boys get into it and the big money gets into it and the countries and the banks and all the investment hedge funds get into it, it's going to be bigger than Ben-Hur and it's going to be the biggest bull run you've ever seen. That's one theory. The third theory is it's somewhere in between. Now, which one is it? No idea. I'm leaning, leaning a little bit more to this will be much bigger and a lot different. Because again, once the money comes in from the ETF, you, you've got main financial institutions investing in this. $1 trillion market cap is going to go to $10 trillion. A big call. What are we at? $1.4 trillion market cap. That's all the money in crypto at the moment. These ETFs get approved. Man. 
you, you just cannot fathom how much money is coming into these markets. So then the question is, will it pull back like all the other times? Great question. Uh, Steve J says, start using DEXs, not KEXs. Uh, Annex, the crypto space says, Mexi, I like. They offer me an advertising deal. Clintron says, question regarding CoinSpot. How do you go setting limit orders when they have been in AUD? Usually when I'm thinking about snipping a price, I'm thinking in US. Yeah, really good question. There's two ways to do what, what I do, honestly, I, I just know it off the top of my head now. When you're when you're converting from Australian to US, not not exactly because the exchange rate's always changing, but you know that roughly what it is. But the other way to do it, Clintrons, is essentially just have a, a calculator next to you, a converter right next to you on a separate screen, which is also available through the crypto dot land, a, a converter, and you do the transactions just there. Look. Remember, there's not one set price for all of these coins. And also remember, you've got exchange rates. Even exchange rates change. So you might look at the Australian to US dollar exchange rate with this bank, and it's different with that bank, which is different to this exchange. So not even that's black and white. Then you go to how much is a bit, as an example, how much is a Bitcoin? Well, it depends which exchange you're going to. So don't get too bogged down on that. I would just literally have a calculator next to me on the screen saying, do the conversion right now. Steve J. Adam, what is your price target for BTC this bull run? Good question. Uh, again, it, the bull run is difficult to, de to define, but I, I put it out there. I'll put it out there again. You are easily going to see a six-figure US Bitcoin. So the high of last run was 69000 US dollars. I reckon around $140,000, at least 100000 about $140,000 is what, I keep my analyst, my analysis of the markets keeps coming up with $140,000. But then sometimes I, I think that we don't know what's coming. That is, we, we do not realize how big this thing's going to get. Like it's going to get so big. You're just going to be like, man, I didn't see that coming. So long way of saying about 140 grand with easy 100 grand at the bottom. Jason Friskin, the WEF um, cretins are everywhere. Gaz apparently even the guy from Rumble is connected to the WEF. Oh, I don't say that. So Rumble, the uh, competitor to YouTube, if he's connected to the WEF, then we're screwed. Craig Patton says, I've been keeping money on exchanges recently because it takes so long for the bank to approve my transfer. Great point, Craig. So here's the thing. This is where the banks are keeping you out of the markets. Let's say you follow my advice. Great point, Craig. You get me on a rant here. Let's say you, you do everything that I just told you, right? Yes, I say, right. You get your exchanges, you join CoinSpot, you join Coinbase, you join Binance, you join, uh, I don't know, even CoinGecko now you can buy from there. You, you bought, join Bybit and you've got all the, and you're all good to go, right? And then you hear the advice, don't keep your money on exchange, which is good advice. And then something happens and it's like, right, go. And it's like, right, I'm in. And it's like, hey, I, I, I can't get on the money. I can't get on the on-ramp. I can't get my money in there. It's like, well, what do you mean you can't get that money in there? It's like, because the banks won't let me put money into the exchanges because the banks put limits on how much money I can put onto the exchanges. And it's like, my hands are tied. Now, of course, the banks have all the money in the world. They can get on the exchanges and they're going to be scooping it up while they keep you and me, us little plebs on the side saying, stay out there, you little cretins. You can't get in here. We're going to buy all this stuff up. So the way to protect yourself from this is you get your stable coins and you put them on a hard wallet, then they can't stop you. So that, that's how you get around it. There's always a way around it. We're always smarter than them. We're always a step ahead. Remember, the private sector innovates and the public se sector regulates. And, and banks are the public sector. Why are they the public sector? No, they're not public servants. No, they don't work for a government agency, but the government departments give them the freedom to do all the stuff that they do. Fraction reserve lend, block transactions, shut down your competitors. That lend money to the government. It's all one and the same. They, they, they say it's separated. No, it's all one and the same. The private sector innovates, the public sector regulates. And banks aren't innovating. They catch up on everything we're doing and then try to adapt it to their model and get control of it. So what we can do as crypto goers is you buy a stable coin, you pull it off the exchange and you put it in your cold storage. Then they can't touch you. Then when the bull run ha happens and you're like, man, I need $5,000 to buy Atom, as an example, you connect your hardware wallet, you get your stable coins off and you go shopping. That's how you do it. That's how it's done. 
Now that I've exposed the secret, they're probably going to shut that one down as well. Steve J says, um, difference is, Adam, there was no public ledger for gold. Yeah, very, yeah, very good. So we're talking about why the ETF this time will be different for Bitcoin is that you couldn't actually see the public ledger for Bitcoin. Really good point, Steve J. Bloody brilliant point. When it came to the gold ETF back in the day, first of all, you didn't really have the internet that we had now. And even if you did, there wasn't a ledger for the gold. How much gold was there and who was buying it? You couldn't see. But with Bitcoin, you can. Yeah, everyone can look at the ledger straight away. Uh, Julie, she says, hey, Julie. She says, hello, Adam. Just got back from New Zealand. Cruise was very cold and rocky. Just finished watching your streams. Loved all the rantings. Thank you so much, Julie. Hopefully you're listening to me at 1.25, 1.5, 1.75 or two times speed to get more crypto in less time. Guy, Adam, what what do your chicken chickens eggs look like? I bought 100% organic free range eggs and I'll be honest, although extremely fresh, the color was the same. The color was the same as free arranged supermarket bought. You have a pick. Okay. Um, so all of my eggs come in different colors uh, that's quite normal anyone who raises chickens so we're talking about chickens here when i lived in america story time with uncle adam i couldn't believe how white the eggs were like they were they're like too white they're like a piece of paper white so i don't know what americans do but it's like they bleach their eggs or something it's weird in australia our eggs are kind of more natural even if even if they were caged eggs they're, they're kind of brown but i, I can get eggs and this is how I know when my chickens are laying eggs, because I know which egg comes from which girl. I can see, like Clucky, old Clucky, she still lays eggs. This is like a 110-year-old woman giving birth. She still lays eggs. Not much, but every week she'll give me one olive drab egg. I've got another chicken who gives me blue eggs. I've got another chicken who gives me dark brown eggs. And th the truth is, all chicken, not all chickens, but most chickens give different colored eggs, especially when they're yours. Some are lighter, some are darker, but you can actually start to marry up which chickens with which one. And what's interesting is they're all getting the same diet. They get a very good diet. They're all in the same environment. So that's that's a long way of saying, Guy, that uh, you cannot be sure when you're buying 100% organic eggs that they are, in fact, 100% organic. You know, as I said, the best eggs I get are probably from... Well, they're obviously from my chickens, but the best eggs I get are the, are the green and the blue ones. All eggs are essentially the same, but you know, you, you get to taste them better. But the green ones and the blue ones, the olive drab ones and the blue eggs, when they come out, they're kind of cool. I don't know. They just seem to taste the best. Steve J says pump will be mammoth. Yep, this pump is, you, you don't know what's going to hit you. Benio, hi Adam. I can't help to think the SEC will delay the ETF and everyone is FOMOing in. I see a title change whereby the SEC is losing more than they're winning but they can still delay. Just my thoughts. I think it's a fair thought, Benio. I think they could delay it a little bit further. But I think ARC, I think the courts have ordered the SEC to give ARC an answer in January. I think it's 10th of January. Steve, am I right? I think there's an order out there to, to say to ARC Finance. That's why that was weird about that article. They didn't mention ARC. I believe January, the courts have ordered the SEC, you will give them an answer. But of course, what's happening in the background? BlackRock, it's hard to know. Anthony says, the higher the hash rate goes, the sooner the halving. Oh, yes. Good point, Anthony. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Craig Patton says, surely ARC goes first or the SEC faces a lawsuit from Kathy and her friends. Yep, probably. But then they'll delay it and delay it and delay it and delay it. And the battle of attrition through the court systems. Steve J says, no public ledger allows for manipulation of the der derivatives and the, of the underlying asset itself. Absolutely. Very good point. Jay says, there's now a chain link scam video on YouTube. Beware, folks. Uh, okay, careful. When they say, I, I, I haven't seen the scam video, but I know what they do. Someone comes out and says, send us your link and we'll send you two in return. Don't ever do that. Jay says, good to hear you call it coin market crap. Yes, they are. Steve Jay, uh, wait till they reveal the marriage of AI and robotics. It's coming. Do your own research. The marriage of AI and, ro and robotics. Oh, yeah, so... AI into robotics. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was real, but I saw, um, it, it could have just been a girl acting. Or it was real. Because who knows now? You don't even know what you're looking at when you're looking on the screen. But it was a Japanese restaurant where the server was a robot. But again, I don't know if it's a girl acting as a robot or a robot acting as a girl. Yeah, you start, think about that. 
Think about what I just said. I don't know if this is a person acting as a robot or a robot acting as a person. We're now getting to that point. You're looking like, I don't know which one it is. You know, like when I was at CryptoCon, I was looking at someone, I'm like, I don't know if it's that gender or that gender. Well, I'll leave that one alone. Hexy McHexican says, what's up? Hey, good to see you, Hexy McHexican. It's been a while. Red Squirrel says, oi, 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 great to have you here. Uh, Dylan G says, thinking pretty hard about swapping half of my dot for a bag of BTC. Uh, yeah, dot has had a lot of developer activity a while ago, but haven't heard many rumors about the chain and nothing really happening. That's a, I lost a lot of confidence in dot a while ago, Dylan, uh, and I'm not telling you what to do with your money, but if you're thinking about swapping it, Look, if you want to hold the Bitcoin, maybe swapping it now because Bitcoin's going to go up. But the truth is that as a percentage, when DOT pumps, because remember, during the run, everything's going to pump. Everything's going to pump. And if you held on, you're, you're probably going to get a better price for DOT at the moment in the future than you would at the moment. So you need to map out, do I swap it now for Bitcoin or do I wait for the markets to pump and hope that DOT also pumps and then switch it across? Um, if it were me, I, so what I'm doing, I'm not telling you to do this, but what I'm doing, I'm not selling anything now. I'm waiting for the run. You don't want to sell anything now. Now's the accumulation phase. Don't sell now. And you say, well, I'll swap it for Bitcoin. Well, both are going to pump, but as a percentage, you know, Bitcoin might do 100% to, to 150%, but DOT could do 400%, and it's slipping further down the charts. I, I don't know. Could DOT go to... Uh, twenty-eight dollars. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Who knows? Looking at the rankings, Bitcoin one, Ethereum two, Tether three, BNB four, with XRP at five, USD at six, Solana at seven, Lido staked Ether at eight, Cardano nine, Dogecoin ten, Tron eleven. Those coins have not moved for weeks. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, maybe eight swapped around, but really nine, ten, eleven. That hasn't moved. Chainlink, the dark horse I gave you a while ago. That's at twelve. Toncoin thirteen. Avalanche fourteen. Uh, if you want a dark horse, I've told you AVAX, but I'll give it to you again. Avalanche is a dark horse. Polygon Vatic 15, Polkadot 16, Rap Bitcoin 17, Dai 18, Litecoin, my old friend at 19. Shiba Inu, Shiba Inu at 20, Uniswap at 21 with Bitcoin Cash at 22. Leo Token 23, OKB with the code of OKB at 24. XLM, the cousin to XRP. You're at 25. True, SU, you, true USD, English is fun. You're at 26 with XMR, the true stablecoin at 27. Casper, making a move into position 28. About time you're getting up here with Cosmos Hub Adam at 29. And Ethereum Classic has finally slipped out of the 20s position and is now at position 30. Kronos, CRO, climbing up the charts. The Dark Horse I gave you a while ago. You're at 31 with Lido Dow at 32. Filecoin, 33. Hidira H bar. Keep your eye on that one as well. At 34, Internet Computer at 35, Aptos APT, and Near Protocol at 36 and 37, respectively. And if you want more dark horses, I won't muck around now, people. Aptos and Near Protocol, look at them. Not telling you to buy. Aptos and Near, look at them. Binance USD at 38, Immutable at 39, and VeChain at position 40. Many of you can read between the lines with what I'm saying here. Don't get me sued. Biggest gainers over the week was Blur, up 73.3%. Uh, remember, two parts to Blur, as I said before. Don't blur the lines. Oh, that was terrible. you got the native token, and you've got what it does at the back end. If you want to invest in the native token, cool. You made 73.3% in a week. But just be careful giving your Ethereum to someone else. ApeCoin, look at that. I'm making a move back. At 29.4%, uh, Wonder Woman, you were asking me about um, uh, NFTs. What do I think about them? I think they're going to have a good run this time. But again, the, the problem with NFTs is which ones do you buy? There's unlimited NFTs, as there's unlimited coins. Which one do you buy? Figure that out, and I'll pay you. Minaprocol up 28.2%. Clayton up 276 Illuvium, I need to look into this. Can someone give me contact? I need to reach out to Illuvium. You're up 24.5. I know I have to look into it. Well done, Illuvium, with a code of ILV. Uniswap up 20%. Radix up 18.6. Synthetics up 17. Sui up 16%. The Graph GRT up 14.3. Aave up 14.2. Gala making a bit of a comeback. Come on, Gala. You know the founders are fighting, but hopefully you sort it out. 12.4%. KuCoin up 12.2. VChain up 12. Hey, founders of VeChain, I'll meet you at the conference. 
get back to me. I want to talk to you. I want to learn about VeChain. I love VeChain, but I, I want to see where they're at. The market loves them as well. Lido Dow, you're up 10. Fetch AI up 9.5. And Gas, which is the, the Gas Fees or the Gas for Neo, you're up 9%. Very interesting with Gas up. I've made a lot of money off Gas recently. Why? Because I've, I've been earning Gas for like six years, I think. And suddenly it just pumped. I'm like, cool, free money. Immutable X up 8.5. Decentraland Mana up 7.7. Monero up 7. Curve Dow up 6.8. Frax up 6.6. .6 and Lido up 6.6. .6. Good day in crypto. Good week in crypto. Biggest gainer, Blur up 73.3. Biggest losers, strap yourselves in, kids. Uh, we've got a blank data set there. But Celestia, Tia, well, we didn't, We, I'm not surprised with this. Tia has finally pulled back, or Celestia. You're down 21%. We're not surprised with that because it had a massive run up. That's a natural pullback. A big pullback, but natural. Down 21%. Rollbit down 8.9. Render down 7.2. XDC down 6.8. Polygon Matic down 6.7. Casper finally pulling back. That's that's natural. You're down 5.7. That's more than okay. Solana down 5.1. BNB down 4.3. Avalanche down 3.6. Thorchain down 2.9. And Phantom down 2.4. Biggest gainer being of course blur biggest loser being potentially Python network but we don't have data up here so we'll go with celestia very interesting times okay i've got to walk the dogs I'm desperately running out of time there's no time cut in your life cut away any people who are not adding value to it old man adam speaking here any toxic people in your life even if they're family or not i know some people disagree with me no oh, stick with your family no matter what okay well if if your family member's murdering kittens and beating up old grannies, is you still going to commit to them? No, it gets to a point. You've got to step away. Um, I'm not suggesting any of my family members <laughs> are murdering kittens and um, bashing up grannies. But I do say, you know, if you're, if you're toxic, you're out. I've got no time for it. I've got no time. There's no time. Uh, everyone's saying it's safe, man. Yeah, it was safe, man. Thank you, Mr. Pouse one. Steve J says, um, you need three C's for this market. Cash, courage, and conviction. Well done. Cal, good to see you. Says, g'day, what's your prediction on next USA president, Adam? Oh, <laughs> you had to go there, Cal. Okay. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble for this. I think the Simpsons predicted Biden. Oh, sorry, Trump. So it's got to be Trump. You know, there's this tweet or X of Trump going into this stadium. Don't, don't worry what side of politics you're on. Just listen to what was, what the camera showed and what the news showed as well. So you had social media people who were just like you and me with a camera phone, just recording it. And you also had the mainstream recording it. And they both said the same thing. So he goes to watch this game. What was it? Was it baseball or ice hockey or football or something? I don't know. It was some big game. And he walks in there and the crowd just goes ballistic for Trump. Just like, yeah, Trump, USA, USA, USA. Now, do, can you picture that happening for Biden? And you might say, well, he, Biden doesn't go to these events. Okay, well, maybe that's part of it. And Biden would go to something else where they'd all cheer. It's like, okay, well, I just don't see it. What I do see is wherever Trump goes, people lose their stuff. And it's like the Beatles have rocked up. And they're like, yeah, Trump. And there's massive rallies for him. But on the other side, it doesn't happen that way. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying it is what it is. So based on... What I can see, it should be Trump. And based on, I think it was The Simpsons predicted, it should be Trump. And based on what's happening to the economy, you know, surely people can feel what's happening. I don't know. Richard tweeted about this three milli transfer. He said the mistake was in the wallet code where the dev messed up and didn't have the wallet to send the uns and didn't have the wallet send the unspent BTC back to itself. Instead, it paid all. Um, I, I expected, I expected Richard Hart to talk about this. JBA strike says, Adam, do you transfer BTC via lightning network or to your cold storage? Um, yeah, do, do a small test. So just, you should use the lightning network and you should do a small test. And the first time you do it, and then transfer it across the lightning network's not so much to reduce the, Well, I guess it is to reduce the fees It's to make it faster. For what you're asking JBA strike, you just do a small test first and then transfer it and then record the fees and then claim it on tax. Guy says, I believe they will still send the fee back. If it was a smaller miner, it would be lost a lot less likely. Yeah, I, I, I actually think they could send it back because it's ant pool. They're a big pool. 
They're a really big pool. I used to mine with them. Uh, Jason Mining says, yeah, banks only had a fraction of what they are supposed to have. Yep. Hexy McKexican says, SEC are the worst. They've already got $30 million from Kraken. They're trying to extort more. Kraken are more likely one of the good guys. Yep, probably. They got $4.3 billion out of Binance. <laughs> what an idiot. Um, Nelson, if you've invested in Luna, if you invested in Luna, you're affected. Uh, you're talking about FTX. Yeah, I'd, I'd accept that. I don't think I had much. Uh, you, you can see how it, when FTX went down, it infected so many people. But yeah, Nelson, you're right. I don't know how much I had, but I, th I think it was nothing. Simone says, next to next to be locked up is Alex Mashinsky from Celsius Network. Yep, so you've got Alex. Oh, and by the way, Do Kwon. So Do Kwon, <laughs> so you've got like the three amigos. You've got Scam Bankrupt Fraud, you've got Do Kwon, and you've got Mashinsky. The three amigos should be locked up soon. Well, one of them's already locked. Actually, they're all locked up. Um, Craig Patton says, call me sick, but I crack a smile thinking of SBF struggling in prison, that prison pocket fitting <laughs> a few more ledgers daily. Uh, he's probably in a rich man prison, so he's probably getting away from it. Um, moving further down, running out of time. If you've got something you want to say, give me a super chat. If not, I'm going to have to fast forward. You don't have to give me a super chat. I'm not asking for your money. It's just that it, when you give me a super chat, even if it's like for a dollar, if you can do that, it pops up on the screen and, and you get priority. Um, Craig says, thanks, Adam. Night all. We we're all signing off. I've got to go. I've got to walk the dogs. Remember, if you want to do anything crypto safely, head over to the crypto.land. Uh, Wonder Woman says, hit that secret message again. I can't about the time, Wonder Woman. And Clinton says, the Simpsons indicator is definitely flashing Trump. Yep. Yep. They keep getting it right. You think it's a joke, but they keep getting it right. Remember, if you want to do anything crypto safely, head over to the crypto.land where you can do everything crypto safely on one simple and secure site that's reloading. I swear to God, the feds are attacking the crypto.land. There's no money you can put on the crypto land, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, can you hit the like button? Pulse currently at a sixth of sacrifice. Uh, Hex at combined at 1.7 cents. Um, Steve J says, have a good one all. Hit that like button. Thank you very much to my Patreon supporters. Just quickly, because you deserve another shout out. Malcolm from justwillybins.com.au. Michael Dunford of Monash Glass. Lee Perry. Darren Carter from Endura Flooring Extra. Gary from the Hive Carter and Estate Pool. Carly McEwen Coaching. Luke Broad Express. Closed Car Transport. Evan Floyd. I'm Adam Stokes. Thanks for listening. Happy investing. Go you good scary bubbles. And I'll talk to you next time.